This program brought to you by Korea Tourism Organization. LG Life's Good. Korea has always been great at holding firm to its rich and distinct culture while working to stay on par with global trends. It has always maintained a strong connection with its history and culture by preserving its various art forms and traditions. So I went down to an area of town best known to exemplify that. This is Insidong. It's a prominent historic district of Seoul. People from everywhere come down here to get a taste of traditional Korea without having to leave the cosmopolitan city. Down this main strip here and the side alleys, one can find art galleries, arts and crafts, shops, restaurants, and traditional tea houses. In Sedong, known as Mary's Alley to Foreigners, is considered to be the heart of Seoul and has been the cultural center since the Japanese colonial period when everyday items for the privileged class were sold here. Today, many of these antiques are still being sold. It's said that over 40% of the nation's antique stores are right here in Insidong, selling more old pictures, antique pottery, wooden containers and jewelry than anywhere else in Korea. There's so many beautiful and very unique pieces all along this street. I haven't seen pieces like this anywhere else in Seoul. Look at this stuff, it's gorgeous. The price of items on display varies, as do the items themselves. You can purchase anything from 10 US dollars to 10,000. Of course, it's always wise to do some comparison shopping before making your actual purchase. And though they say the prices are fixed, you can always try to haggle for that good bargain. Most of the stores sell knickknacks, old books, pictures and calligraphy. But traditional Korean ceramic ware is the main art collection in Insidong and the most popular item for tourists. As I walked around, I saw a lot of things that caught my eye and definitely seemed to fit my budget. Oh, I like these. Very nice. How much are they? 5,000 won for this lovely, what feels like pure silk bag. 5,000 won, that's about five American dollars. That's very reasonable if you ask me. This street made headlines when Queen Elizabeth II of England praised Insidong's beautiful art form upon a visit in April of 1999. This led to many other tourists following suit. Much of the area's attraction can also be attributed to the 70 or so art galleries displaying and selling modern art pieces along, of course, with antiques. Do note that Insidong becomes a vehicle-free zone on weekends, allowing for travelers from abroad to also set up shop, peddling the many wares they picked up along their journeys. However, Insidong attracts the numbers it does by more than just the unique shopping experience. Food is also a very important aspect of this district. Many restaurants are situated along the many alleys, offering an array of traditional cuisine from authentic Korean dishes to Chinese or Japanese food to simple Buddhist temple food, all served in very unique settings. Just make sure, though, you know what you're getting. street in town where all the signs have to be written in Korean, even Starbucks. <laughs> There's only a few Western chain stores to be found in Insidong, such as Starbucks, 7-Eleven and McDonald's, of course. <laughs> 
To maintain and preserve the traditional Korean feel of Insidong, foreign franchises are required to spell their company name in Hangul, the native alphabet of the Korean language, on all their storefronts. As much as I love my Starbucks, I decided to give the coffee shops a miss and try out something much more local and something Insadong is actually renowned for. Now there's tea shops all along Insadong, but I particularly like my experiences as authentic and traditional as possible. So I decided this very cute and quaint alleyway to try to find my cup of tea. These alleys are said to be the showcasing grounds for traditional Korean vintage tea and tea culture. The numerous tea houses found here have unique shop names with elegant antique interiors. They also play traditional music, making every visit a rather memorable one. Tea was first introduced to Korea around 6050 BC by the Chinese, leading to the many fields and festivals throughout the country today that pay homage to the drink. Originally, tea was used for ceremonial offerings in worship rites. Today, monks use the benefits of tea to help ward off drowsiness and to invigorate their mind and body. So many Koreans in turn see tea drinking as a very sophisticated and healthy practice. Thank you. This is a traditional Korean tea house. It's absolutely lovely. I mean, fish bowls for tables. They've got birds flying around freely in here. They've got a variety of different Korean teas. They certainly do take their teas seriously. And a lovely place to find tea houses like this are all along Insadong. Great atmosphere along that particular road. And I felt very comfortable, no hassle. And you know what? I even found a lot of items a lot cheaper down here. So uh, have a look around. I definitely suggest it. Mmm, cinnamon, my favorite. <laughs> to best experience exactly what you want in Insidong, don't forget to pick up a map of the area at any TIC or Tourist Information Center. For more information, log on to www.tourtokorea.com. Do send us your comments to koreasparkling at city7tv.com. It's a must-see for all tourists. Let's go see the moon fine. I'm in Asia's largest water park. This is Korea Sparkling. <laughs> I was so mad. I was so sad. I don't like it. <laughs> You're so lovely. I don't like it. And you're still talking about him and you didn't divorce him yet. <laughs> Be careful. It's now probably about. <sighs> this program brought to you by Korea Tourism Organization. LG Neo Plasma Plus. LG, life's good.